The word why, what a curious word. The kind of word that can make us cringe, feel defensive, or even distant. But you know, sometimes why is the key. The key that can unlock so much to our lives. Join me as we explore the why with fascinating contributors to the world. Those that entertain us, inform us, teach us about life, and if we're lucky, inspire the next in all of us. I'm your host, Dr. Rod Berger, and welcome to Headroom, a production of Rainlight and co-produced by Old Soul. Let's go. Habib, thank you for taking some time. I know tomorrow is a big, a big uh, monumental event for you and Eagle FC. I want to start with this. How have you changed as a man since retirement? I think it's changed a lot, you know. I stopped like uh, training every day twice. I was training all my life every day, like four or five hours at least. And now I'm all like training only like one and a half, one and a half, maybe maximum two hours. I gain a little bit weight, 10, 12 pounds. And uh, I changed my schedule. You know, my schedule a little bit changed, but but now I focus on Eagle FC and uh, and couple more uh, other my uh, business projects. A lot of a lot of athletes when they retire, they struggle to find that competitive experience that they grew up with, right? Training multiple times a day since they were kids. Uh, has that been a challenge for you or has diving into the business world met that same need or a similar need? No, it was, it was very hard. It was very hard for me. Even now it's still, you know, it's like uh, I cannot find someone where I can enjoy like in training, you know. And uh, because like only when I train, I feel good. When you train, like, you feel yes, good. Yes, like even when I go, I have business meetings. We like even we make like some good deals, make money. This is don't give me energy. Like I get energy inside it inside the training, you know. And uh, that's why I keep training, but not like before. And of course, doing same time doing like some business projects. Like, does it does it impact you? Because you are, because uh, you're, you're a dad, you're, you're a family man, that that balances it out. I mean, you're not, you know, you're not a teenager anymore, just training every day in that regard, right? Does that? No, I'm not a teenager like <laughs> <laughs> anymore. It's like a long time because I'm 33 years old. You know, of course, I have family, kids. I have to take care. I have like my close people, like my brothers, like my friends. They keep fighting in high level, illegal FC, Bellator, UFC. Some of them like already like almost best in the world, like contenders in UFC, you know. And uh, I and I have like uh, business, you know. I have so many different things where I have to stay focused, you know. Keeps your mind busy. Yeah, very interesting, you know. It's very interesting for me, <clears throat> and. Uh, because of I finish my professional career, I get some free time. And uh, now this time I can use on every platform, you know. What have you learned about yourself? I'll, you know, athletes will talk about that free time, that space where it's just you and you're not occupied with competition in the same way. What have you learned about yourself? What is that experience like? Are you more reflective? No, about myself, I learned like uh, I didn't know I'm good businessman before. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about like I'm like just athlete fighter. <clears throat> now I find out like God gave me this good energy. You know, I can go meet with people and get finished like done some good deals. You know, I have this, and uh, I know a lot of um, people around the world. I can go and I can connect people, you know, and uh, this is what I find out when I finish my career. You've been described in your career as both brilliant and terrifying. How do you want to be regarded when we think of you as an entrepreneur? Honestly, I don't know. Honestly, I never think about this, how I want people think about me. I just don't pay attention on this. I just focus on myself what I have to do every day. 
I have every single day, like even like for next June, July and August. All these days I already know what time, what date, where I have to go, where I have to fly it, with who I have to meet, you know, I have schedule and I follow this and, uh, you know, I think uh, it's not easy, same time for me, but even if I don't remember how many days I have in my life, when days come, I don't know what I have to do, you know, I always have plan every single moment, like day, every hour. What happens know, if you like, don't? Huh? What happens if you don't? Is that upsetting? Does that? No, no. Sometimes I, I take some rest, you know, I off my phone. I off my phone. I just take some rest, try to sleep good, you know, but, uh, but most of the days I always have schedule. You know? It sounds like you're, you're thinking all the time. All the time. All the, <laughs> the time. The motor is always going. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes even when I was sleeping, like my brain, like keep going, you know. <laughs> They say that, you know, uh, competition uh, in the ring is a given. Um, is competition in business just as good? No. Inside, inside, the, inside the octagon is much better. It's much better in the octagon. In, in octagon because they have, they have rules, they have fair, you know. But outside, no. A real life, it's not fair, you know. There's no referee. There's no referee. There is rules, but most of the people, they broke the rules, you know, they don't follow the rules. But inside the cage, like when you fight inside the octagon, like if you don't follow, follow rules, you're going to lose. That's why everybody follow the rules. You guys compete. If you best, you're going to win. But in business, not all the time. Yeah, Sometimes you, you can be the best, but mm, that is not fair. It's not fair. Yeah. Has that been an adjustment? I don't know, but like I can feel it like last, last couple years, last couple years, yeah, I can feel it. Like, because even if you watch last, last my two couple years in MMA and last my two, like almost two years without fighting, without professional career, like I think like uh, business, business uh, life is more hard. You mentioned Dana White and uh, ESPN.com. You said you call him brother, uh, and you said you still had unfinished business with him. Do you think that he's teaching you a lesson? No, Dana White is he's he's the best of all time promoter in my opinion. Nobody is even close. And uh, I try to just learn from him because I just beginning. I think uh, I think I can I can learn from him a lot of things, like even next ten years, twenty years. He can teach me, I think. Do you think he's, is he teaching you right now by not responding to you? Uh, Almost like a brother? <laughs> uh, no, I think he play game. You think he plays yeah, games? Yeah, he play game. <laughs> That's the business <laughs> outside he, of the... <laughs> even, even on this situation, I have to learn from him. You, you have know? to learn from him. Yes, I have to because, uh, because he told me like last time when we talk about like promoting, he says like, uh, you, now you're gonna understand myself more. I say, okay, we will see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to I want to pivot the conversation, Habib, and talk about being an entrepreneur, but more importantly, being an immigrant that's an entrepreneur. We see it in Hollywood, right? We, we read it in books that the American dream, that when people come to this country, they often talk about that mantra, that, that slogan of the American dream. What, is the American dream alive for immigrants in your perspective? How do you how do you look at that and what advice do you have for young people that are coming to this country that want to start their own business? They want to put their stamp on their experience here in the U.S. I think, I think there is like American dream is like it's alive. Like uh, before when people talk about, about American dream, I didn't understand this. But now I can understand because I remember myself when I first time when I come to US, it was uh, 2000, beginning, like January, 2012, 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. And uh, look at now where I am, you know, last 10 years, I sacrifice everything what I have. Uh, I stay focused, I work so hard. And now, uh, last 10 years, I become like champion, defend title. 
I become UFC Hall of Famer, you know. Now I have my own promotion, you know, and I have so many other um, business and, uh, uh, but like myself, I believe this is from God, you know, because not only you, there is so many other people too who work very hard, but they don't get it, get it. But I have it, you know, but reason, reason why, because I work so hard then God give you, you know, but there is like American dream is like things. It's, it's like true, you know, because you're uh, living the American yes, dream. Yeah, and because you're like, how many, like more than 300 million people living here, more than 300, like, and everybody make some like good money, I think. And most of them, like, even if they come from Russia, from Mexico, from Africa, doesn't matter. They work here. They they make money for this they self and they send home money. You know, it's like it's like this is very good platform for people who really want to work. Here, yeah, even you can choose. You can be bum too, if you want. You can you be bum. <laughs> yes, you can choose here. You know, Personal choice. if you want, you can make money too. You know, it's like not many countries like this. Like in uh, some like most of them countries in the world, you can try to make money, but you can't, you know. But this country is like, uh, for this, uh, for this uh, kind of things, it's, it's like very good. Headroom is produced by Old Soul, a one-stop marketing agency that understands the power of brand and nuance. Reach out to my guy, Matt, at Old Soul and supercharge your brand and content strategy. That's Old Soul. Shoot Matt a note at aoldsoul.com. That's a oldsoul.com and now back to our guest a lot of people when they start a business they do so in private they're not a public figure do you ever sense like when you go to sleep at night do you have a sense of responsibility for those that are inspired by you i know that muhammad ali mike tyson ronaldo inspired you as an athlete but do you think about that for that individual that's you know living in a one-bedroom apartment in L.A., thinking that they want to start something and they've idolized and looked up to you through your career? Honestly, no. No? I didn't think about this. But I know, like, many people follow me. They know me. You know, i am very become very popular because I can feel it. Even when I go outside, even in Europe and Arabic countries, Russia, here in the U.S., everywhere, a lot, a lot of people know me, but... But inside, I still, I still from village guy, you know. You still the village yeah, guy. I just, I, I come out from village, but not <laughs> inside me. It's like still, you it know. It still lives but in you. Still lives in me, and uh, I think it's gonna be very hard to take. Sometimes I understand how popular I am, but most of the time I don't think about this. I just focus on myself, what I have to do on my schedule, on my family, kids, friends, close people, business partners, like. Habib, would you say that you're comfortable with fame or you're uncomfortable being famous? No, no, honestly, I'm uncomfortable. You're uncomfortable? Yeah, uncomfortable because, uh, uh, I think like so many minus, you know, a lot of. Of course, because of fame, you can do like business like this, but most of the time it's like, uh, I feel uncomfortable. Because every, all, all eyes on you, you know, all the time, everywhere. You can, you can feel free, like only inside your room, inside your house, you know. <laughs> you come out, you don't feel free, you know. Even if you, even if you're living in freedom country in America, <laughs> even. <laughs> Like, I don't know about you. I think you can feel free, you know, when you go out, nobody bother you. Yeah. Nobody, like, make video. So but you bring most, up an mo important mo point. Most of the time, like, I feel I'm uncomfortable. You bring up an important point, though. If I feel comfortable, right? Well, I'm in America, I'm a white male, right? And so things have been set up for me to be comfortable, right? And yet, you know, we want to be a diverse country in that regard and support people from all across the world. Um, is community important to you, becoming... A part of the American community? How does that, how does, how has that been for you in the last 10 years? Oh, it's like, it doesn't matter where I'm living. Like, 
America or other countries, like, uh, honestly, I always want to go back to my country, to, to Dagestan. Village. Yes. I'm living in village. I still living in village. I have house uh, there. And... Uh, Describe it for me. What, what, what would it be like if I was there with you? What... I have gym. I have horses. I have animals there. I have big land. You know, I have a small company where I sell vegetables. You sell vegetables? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> People. <laughs> Before I was... That's breaking I, news of you. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I sell vegetables when I was uh, 10 years old. 10 years. No. Younger, maybe like 8, 9, 10. When I was, we have a big farm with father. I remember we sell, we sell tomato. We sell tomato. I sell tomato when I was young. But now we have big land, of course. And uh, yeah, I have company, we sell tomato too. I get the this sense, is... even the look on your face when you talk about home, <laughs> the peace, yeah. like peaceful. It's like, uh, I like, of course, who, who, who don't like living in California or Florida when you have money, you can buy a house, you can stay here. But my heart is... Your heart is there. My heart is there. You yeah. know? Of course, right now I'm sitting with you here in beautiful arena, FLX arena. Tomorrow I'm going to have very good show here in Eagle FC. You know, around the world, many people going to watch this. But I'm thinking about when I'm going to go... When you're going go, home. Go back to the, my village, you know. <laughs> Let, let's talk a little bit about failure. Look, you're very unique. You were undefeated in your professional career, yet entrepreneurs fail all the time. How do you understand failure and how does it drive you now in business? I don't know. I was like, this is, it was my best motivation when I was tra in, on training camp, when I was preparing for fight and I'm thinking about this, oh, this guy gonna beat me if I'm not training hard, you know? It was like my best motivation. I all I always realized this, and uh, even like even I like couple like like one hour ago was sitting with friends. We was talking about one fight. Like I asked them, how is like you high level athlete and you fight for the title and someone can choke you from the back? I don't understand this. Even if you give this position, how you can give your neck? And uh, like, if you fight for the title, if you win, you're gonna call yourself world champion. World champion, it's been like you're the best. You're better than seven billion people. Around. Like in the world, seven billion people, you're better than everybody. You wanna call yourself world champion and someone choke you from the back. This is like, give me, best motivation when I was thinking about I'm gonna lose. Because when I have opponent, I always think, okay, what you do? Is grappling? Okay, I have to work on grappling. He's striker, I have to work in strike. I have to work on my defense. Like all my day was, I was realized, I was thinking about what's gonna happen inside the cage. And uh, and of course, I was training very hard. And uh, sometime I remember, I was training morning, I go home, rest, I come, I train at night time, I go home and I was like, no, it's not enough two time. I have to go one more time. And sometimes 12, 11, 11 p.m. Sometimes I was go going, I remember like to the training, I train three times in the day, come home, okay. I have like five, six hours to rest because seven morning is gonna become it sounds New like training. Like, sounds you know, like, like I was like, this is like, it was my life. You know, I sacrificed everything what I have. I was sleep, train, eat, repeat, and that's it. Obsession? Yeah. In your DNA? I mean, were you like this even as a little boy? Uh, I think it's, it's not about DNA. I think uh, more than blood, I think it's about mental, your brain, how you think about this. How, how, um, uh, like, uh, there is like, you want this or no? There is not like 50-50. It's 
It's like, okay, I want this and I want other. You cannot, you, you, you can't work like and on business projects and be professional athletes. No, it's impossible. You have to be like professional athlete or businessman. You know, there is like not between. You have to be in somewhere. It's black and white. Yeah. To you come from your, from your father, would you say? I think yes, because I know like so many of my father friends, they told me doesn't matter where my father was going. He always have bag with him and training, training stuff. And uh, first of all, he always, when he come somewhere in city, you find where he gonna sleep. Second, he always try to find gym because uh, it was his hobby, you know. He really loved this and uh, he was like very focused guy. I never in my life, I never hear he talk about some business stuff. Never? Never. He was always invest us, me, my brother, his students, everybody, he tried to always invest us, you know, try to give us good education, try to put us on good school. And of course, every day he trained us morning and night. I get the sense that he's <clears throat> with you in everything that you do, uh, that you think about him. What do you think he would, what would he say to you uh, about Eagle FC and this transition from retirement to... Yeah, we was, we, I, I was talking with, with him about this because uh, when, I, when I buy Eagle FC, it was a different name. It was GFC. And when, when it was GFC, uh, my father was alive. I was active fighter and I, w I remember I was talking with him. It's like, just stay focused because I was one of the owner. I have 33%. You know, 33, 33, 33, it was three owners. I was there and, and I remember like father told me, right now your goal is like you professional athlete, stay focused here. When you finish, you can buy, you can buy other parts. And, uh, and when I finish, of course, my father was not with me and I buy and I become owner and I change, I change the name, not GFC because it, be, it become like EFC, like Eagle FC. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> even in business, he gave me a lot of advice, but I remember like he told me, if he gonna do some business stuff, he gonna lose focus on me. Because uh, he say, for you, myself is more important than I need some business, you know, and, uh, yeah, I learned from him a lot to stay focused and uh, like a lot of things. Let, let, let's wrap with this, Habib. How will we know or how should we judge Eagle FC as a success? When will you be able to sit back and say, you've done it, right? It's not, it's not maybe winning a match like you'd had mm -hmm. when you were a professional athlete, but I, do you have a goal? Yes, Is there... I think we need like five, five seven years. Five to seven years? Because for this business, you have to create content. To create content, you need years and years, you know. We're just beginning, you know. We're just beginning, we need, we need uh, at, I think, at least like five, seven years to become like on top. Habib, thank you. Uh, we wish you well on this endeavor. Even if it takes five to seven years, it sounds like you're built for this and uh, your, your disposition to understand, learn from, and, and win from your relationship with Dana White and your history uh, as a Hall of Famer is gonna serve you well. I wish you well. Thank you, Happy. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the plunge into Headroom, where we uncover the why behind the what and who impacting our lives. Headroom is a production of Rainlight and co-produced by our friends at Old Soul. I'm your host, Dr. Rod Berger, and this is Headroom.